Welcome back to another reading and correcting of Stepping Up with me, Kendar, the Tiger Rights, and Ty, the Tiger Supervisor. Today we are doing Chapter 6. How did you score first place? Don demanded, getting close to Tips. He stepped back. He knew better than to allow the corruption sorcerer to touch him. The men might not be responsible for what infected Tibbs, but but it was a constant reminder of the damage that element could cause. That and the pool at one end of Merchant of Merchant Row. How about you know, let's, how about gaining out of our way, Don? Tibbs said, pressing a hand on Tibbs' back to keep him keep them from colliding. You, the sorcerer snarled. This is all. This is because of you. Hard knuckles is wow. Hard knuckle is your family. No wonder you tried to convince us he hated you. He didn't want us to realize everything he did for you. Jekyll sighed. Don, Tib says you're smart. So how about you stop saying stupid stuff? Knuckles wouldn't get me a tankard of water if I was on fire. He'd put you out, Kirina said. Harry wouldn't let a runner burn to death. Not even you. He's hoping you're going to feed the dungeon. Irina, I love you like a sister, Jekyll said out of the side of his mouth. But you realize I'm trying to make a point with Dawn, right? Then make a better one, as said, which earned him a glare from the sorceress. side. You can't fool me, Dawn snapped. I'm going to talk with the guild leader. There's no way she, she'll allow this to stand. He stormed off, trying to shove them aside, but they moved out of his way. No one in Craggle Rock let an angry Dawn touch them. Is this in regards to something I missed by returning at the last moment? Kamdar asked. He leaned on his staff, still reeling from his injuries. He said we're first. Jekyll answered, so it's got to be because he didn't have the coin. The coin is to put in and go, and he's going after us. He started walking in. Let's go check the board. I want to see how many nobles team are ahead of us. All of them. Tibbs check. Tibbs grumbled. They all had the coin, so it was easy for them to go in before anyone else. The board had come up in the morning, so the day before was when the teams had to hand over their coins to the guild if they wanted to increase their chance of going in early. On top of secretly charging the runners for the training... For the training they received, the guild let them buy their way into an early position. But since it would tell anyone... since it wouldn't. You know what? Since they wouldn't tell anyone who had paid what, it forced the teams to hand over a lot of their hard earned coins. In a quiet way of defying the guild, this team had stopped giving coins to increase their position. They'd realized that the last team to go in was no more at risk than the first one. They'd also passed their decision along. And until the attack on Stoke, Don had been the only runner still handing over some coins and lording going in before any of the others run, uh, the other runners over them. There was nothing to be done about training fees. They'll charge each of them for three gold for each day they had their teachers. They shouldn't know, but his teacher, Alistair, had told him as part of explaining what the world technically meant. Let's see the reach Epsilon. Tibbs would have to repay the entirety of the amount, which was more than Tibbs could even comprehend. The promised freedom would only come once he no longer owed the guild any coin, not even not when he reached Epsilon. He reached the board and the other runners became quiet, watching them. Tibbs ignored them. If they were first of the if they were the first of the runner team, it was just randomness, not anyone arranging things for them. He quickly looked down the list, not trying to not Trying, not bothering. Not bothering to read the noble's name. They were long and had multiple parts to them. Only nobles could afford to have more than one name. Found the first of the running the runners the runner teams. Pians and kept going. Was Dunn pissed just because this team was before him? It was done, so that was a possibility. Okay, Jekyll said as Tibbs reached the middle of the runner name, the runner's name, and still hadn't hadn't seen his. Well, this could be a problem. He looked at the fighter, 
Jekyll was looking at the list too, but his gaze was higher than where Tiff had been searching. A lot higher. Tiff looked at the top of the list and found his name there, ahead of every other team, team including the nobles. Tibbs did save the dungeon, Dor said, as annoyance formed in Tibbs' stomach. Some form of recompense for some form of recompense for that for it makes sense. Yeah, Jekyll trailed off. The problem with this kind of reward is that it's poisonous. Tibbs, we should have a talk with the guild and have them remove us. I will, Tibbs agreed. But we better do the run first. Tibbs, I think you need to talk to you need to get them to take us out of that spot right now. I don't see the harm in us go, taking advantage of it, you know, said. But even before Jackal explained things to her, the annoyance was starting to dread. Arena, it's not just the runners we need to worry about. And if you look around, they aren't happy about this. Them we can handle. Nobles don't take kindly to being outdone, especially by someone who isn't of their statue. Status. Done is going to be the least of our problem if this remains. Tibbs didn't hear Carino's reply. He was running and cursing not having eaten anything before heading for the board. Tibbs liked having something in his stomach before dealing with problems. Am I supposed to care what you want? The woman demanded. The annoyance in her in Tyrania's voice was loud. Out of the open door to her office, and Tibbs slowed. He'd, expect her to, he'd expected to find her alone. But by the tone, Don was still there. I was promised that if I paid, I would go before those nothing. The man Tibbs didn't re A man. And a man. A man Tibbs didn't recognize said in clipped and disgusted tones. Tibbs peeked around the edge of the door frame. Three nobles stood in the office, with Don pushed to the side, glaring at them. The system is that whoever pays the most goes in first. Tyrone replied sharply. Her color shifted eye shifting eyes flicked in Tibbs' direction before focusing back on the noble. And you expect me to believe a nothing had had the gold to match mine, the noble. Wore. The noble wore a gray cloak trimmed with gold as the man as the man gestured ah. gestured the cloak moved to show black pants of a material Tibbs didn't recognize, tucked into black boots. He also wore black gloves over which were were a handful of rings, each with essence in them. Master Killian, Turner replied, you can go to the abyss for all I care what you believe in. You placed your bid, and it got you the second position. She smiled. If you were so determined to be first, you should have bid more. She raised a hand to silence the protest. If you aren't happy, feel free to go back where you came from. I'm certain that one of this, these fine people will be happy to take your place on the list. The man turned his glare on the woman and other men next to him, his gaze gliding over Dawn as if he wasn't there. He noticed Tibbs before he could duck back. His eyes were ash gray. Tibbs, turn your call. Why don't you join us? Sighing, he stepped into the office. He's the one who stole your position, Don said, pointing. He's a thief. I'm a rogue, Tibbs replied, locking eyes with the sorcerer's sickly purple eyes. Locking eyes with the sorcerer's purple ones and forced himself to maintain it until Dawn looked away. Having an empty stomach was a good thing after all. Tibbs stole nothing, Tyrannia said. He earned it. How? did it ask, causing the guild leader to raise an eyebrow. I didn't put coin in. No, no one on my team did. Tibbs, she warned. Do you really want to question how you deserve to be before all these gentle people? The guild's supposed to be fair, he replied, knowing it was nothing like that. But considering how none of them, considering but considering how none of the unfairness was explicit, this figure she want to maintain that illusion. I don't want to be treated special. Dunn snorted, and no one paid him any attention. You are not receiving special treatment, Tibbs. 
he has admitted to not placing a bid, the great-eyed noble said. How do you justify him being first to go in? Tyrrhenia sighed. Gives us the reason there is a dungeon for you to go into. Him and his team were instrumental in stopping the attack that came far too close to destroying it. Going in first is their reward for the work they did. The noble looked at him in disbelief. Do you expect me to believe this nothing was part of a team of nothing and that they were able to stop a group of corrupt adventurers? Do you take me for a fool? Dunn was the only one still watching Tibbs, but instead of anger, his expression was calculated. That wasn't good either. Wasn't an improvement. I already told you, you'd, I don't care what you believe, Master Killian. I am in charge here, not you. If you want to continue to argue, I can sit here and let you do it and still not care for our war. And okay, I can, if you want to continue to argue, I can sit here and let you do it and still not care for as long as you want. When instead, you might want to ensure you are ready for your turn in the dungeon tomorrow after Tibbs' te team. The man planted his hand on the desk and leaned, to leaned, to leaned toward her. Do not take for granted that your position as leader of this little dungeon outpost gives you the right to order me around. I am not one of the convicts you shipped in. I am brother to no one I care about, she cut him off with a smirk. And yes, being the leader of this little dungeon outpost does give me the right to order you around, Master Killian. For example, I could tell Harry to grab you by the collar of that expensive shirt you wear and throw you onto the transportation platform and send you back to whatever kingdom your brother, the king, rules and keep you you from ever returning here or any of the other noble there from ever from being allowed from from being allowed here even as knights if you really anger me i can have words with the leaders of other dungeon outposts little or otherwise and see to it that that you and anyone that kingdom have anyone from that kingdom have a difficult time convincing them to allow them. Allow you there also. That is the kind of power I, I wield, Master Killian. The noble straightened, and the woman next to him covered her mouth in an attempt to stifle a laugh. Very well, the grey eyed noble said. You have made your point. I will retire, his stone darkened, if you permit that. She nodded, and he turned. Tib stepped out, of, out from the doorway, but still stopped before leaving and looked at, down on him. He says, you, little nothing, would do well to watch what you think of yourself. Little nothing saviors will still end under my boot if they aren't careful. They've watched him and the other two leave and have to find out which house was his and visit it in the night. Once he could trust his hands again. Is there anything you want to add, Dawn? Serenia asked, startling the sorcerer who had still been watching Tibbs. No. You've made your position clear. He too stopped before leaving. This isn't over. Tyrrhenia sighed, rubbing her face. You do realize you've made it impossible for me to put you at the top of the list, correct? Why is my Tim at the top? He asked, stepping to her desk. As I told them, your reward for saving the dungeon. Not blind to what you did, to what it cost you. You aren't limping anymore, but the corruption is still there, isn't it? The shrug. I wish I knew what was special about the corruption they used. She goes, unfortunately, the dungeon locked down before we could retrieve any of the bottles, and the ones left outside only contain normal condensed essence of it. She studied him. Why did you go, Tibbs? I know what you told the others who wanted to protect the town, the dungeon. But Harry knows something he isn't telling me. I'd like you to tell me the truth. That is the truth. I never had a town on my own, just a street. Crackle Rock is my home. 
If the dungeon dies, it dies with him. I'm not going to let that happen. She nodded and smiled tightly. Suppose that telling the same story every time ensures you won't make a mistake in the telling. Regardless of the real reason, you did act, kids, and for that I am grateful. I doubt you understand how important this, this dungeon is. Yes? She nodded. She took a gem from a drawer and Tim's paid attention. It was cloudy with rose with a rose tint to it, and he thought hints of gold. He couldn't make out any of the essences involved in making the communication check. Alistair, she said to it. This is truly not urgent, but the dungeon is open again, so you should already be here, fulfilling your duties to your student. She put it away. Where is he? I don't know. When he is in teaching you his duties are to the guild as a whole, not just me. The guild is more than you? Trina laughed and the sound reminded tips of crystal gently cl clinking together. Ha, huh, the innocence of youth. Yes, Tibbs, the guild is much more than me. I'm only the leader of this town and dungeon. The dungeon has... Each dungeon has a guild and a leader. We will report to a central leader who oversees all our position. It's... Just raise a hand to stop her. All I'd get out of this is a... All you'd get out of this was a headache, not understanding. I'm just a kid and a runner. What you're talking about is beyond me. She nodded. You're a wise one to recognize that. But to answer your initial question, yes, the dungeon is important. Every dungeon is. We need them to train the people we'll need when the time comes. Okay. Going forward. Not now. Now that sounded interesting. She smiled. You consider how the whole of the guild works to be beyond you, Tibbs? This is beyond even that. I was wondering if, that, if it would be worth the headache to know what was coming in time. Probably not. Once he had the headaches, it would be it would be even harder to understand the rest. Okay. She leaned back in her seat and considered him. Are you going to squander every reward I give you? I don't want any reward. Not if it's going to make the nobles angry at me. I don't know what it what they can do. Harry can keep them in their place. Tips muttered. It wasn't like they needed to move to cause their Tibbs' problem. They had so much coins, they could pay people to do that for them. Tibbs didn't think any runners would take Noble's coin, except Don. But the fresh recruits didn't know how dangerous it was to break Harry's rules yet. I'm just a runner, he repeated. I don't want to be treated as anything else. She nodded. All right. Then I suggest you rejoin your team to, let, to get ready for tomorrow. You can't change the way this schedule is, is arranged. Tibbs knew she could. She was making a point by not doing it. To him, the nobles, the other teams. She was the person in charge. None of them got to dictate what she did. And this concludes chapter 8. If you're enjoying this, please leave a like. Subscribe, hit the bell if you want to know when the next one's going to be up. Share with your friends so more people can enjoy this. And if you want to read the first book, it is on Royal Road, uh, as well as this one. Uh, it should be current if you're listening to this as it comes out. Uh, you, if you want to read ahead, you can do that on my Patreon. Both the links are in the notes, as is the link to the Twitch. If you want to watch me read these live on every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, and um, watch me write books. And with that, I shall wish you a good day.